And you know who the most important incumbent that that is hearing that message right now is New York Senator Chuck Schumer, mm. who if Joe Biden wins and Democrats take the Senate, faces reelection in 2022 and has two paths before him. And he now sees the Ed Markey path. And he sees that if if he aligns himself with the Sunrise Movement, uh, you know, with Ed Markey, with Bernie Sanders, and he pushes the progressive agenda as far as he can, then you know what? The Sunrise Movement's gonna be fine with that. They're 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 gonna forget about Wall Street, Chuck. They're gonna they're gonna forget about all of the you know horrible things he's done over his in, entire career if he pushes through a robust progressive agenda and gets it onto the desk of a Joe Biden and gets it signed into law. Like that's that's what that's what though that's what that's what that movement wants. No, they don't they don't have time for all the old people to die off. Or, or for you know, five of six of them to get knocked off every cycle. Like we run out of time at that point. What the left needs is converts, and so uh, you know, I think Chuck Schumer is is the one who's you know reading these results most closely tonight. And he is there, there's nobody that's more of a kind of textbook politician than than Chuck Schumer. And so, so um, yeah, and Ryan, I, I can tell you. There will be conversations had imminently about Chuck Schumer. Uh, and so uh, Chuck Schumer has to go a lot longer way than Ed Markey mm-hmm. convince people that he's genuinely, yep. it, it doesn't, again, genuine doesn't matter, that he's actually going to vote for progressive policies. <laughs> Saying you're going to vote on some of the policies is not good enough. Right. And he won't have any excuses because he'll be majority leader. So he can't say, well, I would have voted for it, but it didn't get to the floor. It's like, well, you control the floor. A hundred percent. Everything's on him from, day, Ryan, from day one. Now, now you get to the, to the core of the matter because electoral victories only matter if it gets, leads to policy victories. So I guarantee you this, especially before the Ed Markey race and before the Cori Bush race, it, it, Left to their own devices, Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi would have never introduced Green New Deal or Medicare for All for a vote, even if we had, the Democrats had all three branches. Now you'd say if you're, you know, a novice at this or a mainstream media reporter, you would say like, oh no, why? I mean, why not? Of course they would introduce that, right? That's the only thing that everybody's talking about. You at least let them vote. Doesn't mean they're gonna win, but you at least let them vote. No way, they were. They didn't do it these last two years when they had the house. They have no plans to introduce it if they win all three branches. But now with progressives winning so many races, you think we're going to let him get away with not introducing those two policies in the House and the Senate? Oh hell no! There's going to be hell to pay, hell to pay if they don't introduce them for a vote. And then you want to vote against it? You're Hickenlooper, and you say I still drink fracking fluid. And okay, well then I guess you're going to serve six years, and and that's it. Uh, by six years from now, if Hickenlooper votes against Green New Deal and Medicare for all, I. I there's not a lot of scenarios I can imagine where he wins re-election. Um, so, but we don't have to go to six years. We can go to two years and Chuck Schumer. You have no excuses if you don't vote on those bills. And so, if you think you're going to be cute by half, you ain't. Uh, and so, I remember that one moment, Ryan, where uh, somebody left a caucus meeting in the House really early on. Uh, AOC had something had said something about a list. And she didn't really mean, hey, I'm making a list of people who are voting the wrong way. Um, but they took it as that. Um, but and to be honest, I, I don't know that AOC is making a list. But there are people who make lists. And and so these incumbents, it's now you know it's not an idle threat. Uh, there, there are lists and you yeah. will get on the list. And then at a bare minimum, you're gonna have a hell of a fight. And and a good chance uh, that you're going to lose and you're going to be done. 
She, uh, yeah, she was actually trying to be helpful. Uh, I remember that that anecdote. She was saying uh, it was an immigration vote where they had voted with Trump on an, an immigration question, and had said she said in this private caucus meeting, "What are you guys doing? You're putting yourselves on a list to get primaried." She wasn't saying I'm making a list and I'm going to go out and organize primary challenges against you, but that's the only way that they can conceive of politics that it has to be a top down orchestrated type of operation. She was saying the complete opposite. You you by your actions are putting yourselves on a list. It is a public list that thomas.gov it's it's where they hold the roll calls and all they have to do is look at the D's who voted with Trump on this immigration question. And that's their heuristic for who they're going to primary. What more do they need to know than that you're with Trump on immigration and we're going to run a primary challenger against you. And she doesn't get the, I mean, those Democrats didn't get the idea that it would be other people who would organically organize these primary challenges. To, to this day, they think that any plot that uh, you know that that any primary challenge against an incumbent has been a plot of AOC behind the scenes. You know the funny thing is I, I can tell you that it's kind of the opposite. Uh, yes. we, wish, we wish AOC would make more of a list, but since she doesn't, uh, others do, and then honestly put pressure on AOC to join the list uh, rather than. Manufacturing one. So, and, and but the thing about uh, people like AOC is their power derives from the people. And so, when people put pressure, I, I don't mean any group, I mean actual voters, actual progressives, when they put pressure on someone like AOC, that pressure is super real. Uh, and it's like a corporation going to a corporate Democrat and saying, Hey, you're either going to get a million bucks in a pack or you're not, right? Uh, and so this is the way democracy is supposed to be, where people put pressure on people that they help to put in office so that they help other progressives. They build a bridge. Now we got a hell of a bridge. So we're going to run across that bridge. Uh, and so it isn't top down, it's bottom up. Uh, and, and it's you guys. And, uh, <laughs> and that's a hell of a thing. We just got you a ton of power. That's wonderful. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.